Ladies and gentlemen, Primetime CP23 here. Popping my fingers and probably annoying all of you. Uh, there have been some pretty significant changes to the Necromancer. Excuse me. Uh, to the Necromancer class, uh, skills, items, etc. And I'm pretty excited about a few of them. Um,. The biggest one that I'm excited about, um, actually, or the biggest few that I'm excited about, are damage buffs, significant damage buffs, to two of my favorite builds so far in the Necromancer beta, and a few items have very significantly changed, and I think this is going to effectively nerf the uh, Bones of Rathma set build that is, you know, that can clear 100 plus greater rifts because you just are invulnerable the whole time. I have not done a build guide on that build because I expect it to even get further nerfed than it currently is. Uh, it was, like I said, it was effectively nerfed in uh, these updates that we're going to go over here in just a minute. So, uh, this could be a long video. If it's going to be uh, more than probably 20 minutes, I'll probably break it up into two separate videos uh, just to, you know, kind of break things up a little bit. So uh, here are the first of the changes for the Bone Prison passive. Sorry. Um, the Bone Prison passive, uh, Bone Spear, Bone Spikes, and Bone Spirit now have a 30% chance to trap enemies in a Bone Prison instead of 10%. So that's good. Um, I don't know how terribly viable that is anyway, uh, even with the buffed chance. Um, but it is good to see that they're making some of these changes. Um, Bone Spear should more reliably hit targets. Uh, the Command Skeletons skill uh, and the Kill Command rune, which I believe is the uh, Blight ability. Um, basically, you just call all your skeletons to one, uh, to one enemy, and when they hit that enemy, they just explode. Uh, so now instead of 80% of your weapon damage, that has been buffed to 215%, which I'm really excited about. Um, that skill, or rather that, that rune was a little underpowered at 80%. I feel that 215% might be a little more fair. Um, corpse explosion damage has been buffed to 350% for the base rune. I assume uh, the damage has been buffed on all the other runes also. Close quarters at some point it had been buffed from 200% to 325%. Corpse Lance. This is one of the things I'm super excited about. Um, so the attack rate for all the runes has been increased. So that means your corpse lances, when you consume a corpse, they're going to explode faster and they're going to hit new targets faster. They're also going to deal 1,750% additional, or 1,750% weapon damage. That is up 1,000% from where it started. So that's huge. That's awesome. Um, skeletal Mage the Contamination Rune. Uh, this was the primary damage dealer in the uh, Bones of Rathma set that I was talking about earlier. Um, basically, with that build, you just run into a rift, make yourself invulnerable, spam, uh, spam Skeletal Mage Contamination, and you spam it fast enough that it uh, resets your cooldown on your two invulnerability skills uh, because of your Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. So the fact that now 
that your damage on that has been reduced from 175% to 100%. That is a nerf. Um, I don't know the exact math on how much of a nerf that is, but it is a, definitely a nerf. Blood for Blood uh, has been buffed. Picking up a health globe removes the health cost of the next blood spell. This effect can now stack up to 10 times instead of 3. Uh, that's going to be good for the uh, blood set, the Tragul set, uh, which has also been changed quite a bit, and we'll get into that here in just a few minutes. The Dark Reaping passive. While using a scythe gain, 2% additional essence and life per kill. So, I don't know how relevant 2% is instead of 1%, but, you know, it's, it's a buff, so we'll take it. It's a buff on something that was not seeing use, to my knowledge anyway, so it's a win, in my opinion. Uh, Serration, Bone Spikes, Bone Spear, and Bone Spirit. You know, an additional 1% increased damage for every 2 yards between you and and the enemy, they still have not fixed the wording on that. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be between you and the enemy. Up to a maximum of 20%. So, that's good. Uh, for the wizard, they, uh, they changed the name of the simulacrum rune on mirror image. They changed it to be called Hard Light, because obviously the Necromancer has a skill called Simulacrum. Okay, so here are just some bug fixes. Uh, fixed an issue where damage bonuses from players' attack speed were not being applied to the Skeletal Archer and Contamination Runes on Skeletal Mage. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, fix an issue that caused Siphon Blood to continue to deal damage to enemies when they were invisible or untargetable. Uh, that's good. Fixed a bug where Devour with the Ruthless Rune did not correctly restore 10 essence per pet consumed. Okay. Okay, so this is one of my most... One of the things I'm most excited about. So, Tragul's Corroded Fang... Uh, it gives the Cursed Scythe Rune on Grim Scythe a 100% chance to afflict a random curse, uh, which, okay. I thought that it was kind of cool, so I had been kind of testing it out, messing around with it. Now, they've given that a damage buff. Increases your damage against cursed enemies by 175% to 200% damage, so... That damage range is going to be a roll, which is good because the skill did not have anything to roll on it, um, other than obviously the primary stats and such. They renamed Dread Golem Spike. It is now Malth Malthorius's Perforated Spike. And we've got another really significant damage buff. Bone Spear now costs 40 essence instead. Instead of, I think it's supposed to be 20 essence, it's now going to cost 40 essence with this weapon. I believe it's a weapon. Uh, but your Bone Spear is also going to do now 375 to 450%. So that's huge. That's, a, that's more than doubling the damage for... Uh, it's more than double the damage for double the essence cost, so that's good. That's going to be fun. Um, the Pestilence Master Shroud set, which uses uh, Corpse Lance and uh, Bone Spear, that's the Bone Spear set, uh, got pretty good buffs, which is good because that set was almost useless, and I thought it was kind of fun to play. So I'm pretty excited about uh, some of the changes that are coming to that. Uh, Blood Tide Blade. Death Nova now deals 20 to 30 percent increased damage for every enemy within uh, 15 yards. 
Uh, previously, it had been listed at 125% to 150% additional damage, but this says that that was actually incorrect, that it was actually only dealing 15 to 20%. So it's a buff. Um, Relina's Shadow Hook. The range has been increased uh, from 2 to 4 to now it's 2 to 5. Essence for each enemy hit. And you also gain plus 5% increased damage for every point of max essence you have. So that makes the skill or the passive that gives you uh, 40 additional essence. That makes that a pretty okay damage buff as well as an essence buff. So, Nair's Black Death. They changed the name. It was originally Death's Scythe. It's now Nair's Black Death. Each poison skill uh, you use increases the damage of your poison skills by 75 to 100%. That has been nerfed to 50 to 65%. That is good because that's one of the uh, that's another one of the items that was used in the uh, in that in my opinion broken build that allowed you to basically be invulnerable the whole rift and just spam your contamination mages. Uh, I did not even attempt to make that build because it did not look like fun and it looked like it would obviously get nerfed, which it has. Spear of Jero, the name's been changed, that's the only thing that changed on it. Um, Iron Rose, okay, the John Stone is the lot. I think is the last big nerf to that broken set. So we'll get back to that in a second. Um, okay, so attacking with Siphon Blood, they canceled out while at full life. So now any time you cast Siphon Blood, you have a 40 to 50% chance to cast a free Blood Nova. That is huge that they got rid of that uh, while at full health because that means we're going to see blood no or rather siphon blood builds which is cool it's good uh part of the problem with the necromancer so far has been the basically lack of viable builds because so many of the sets were seemed weak uh i never actually did it i had an idea to essentially test how how strong the Necromancer sets are compared to sets from other classes. I never actually did it. Um, I still might get around to doing it. Um, but it seems like the Necromancer sets were a little weak. So people were using these broken mechanics, such as this invulnerability build, uh, to be the top of the leaderboard, which is not good. You do not want a build that basically cannot take damage to be the top of the leaderboard. You want damage reduction, not invulnerability at the top of the leaderboard anyway. Uh, so this is gonna hopefully get us some Siphon Blood builds which should increase build diversity some more, so that's good. Okay, so the Johnstone. It was, each corpse consumed by Land of the Dead increases your damage by 10% for 8 to 10 seconds after it ends. That's been changed. So now, each corpse consumed in Land of the Dead grants a stack of Macabre Knowledge. Macabre Knowledge increases the damage of corpse lands and corpse explosion by 150 to 200% while outside of Land of the Dead. So instead of... Uh, using Land of the Dead, killing a bunch of things, and automatically absorbing all those corpses, and then getting a damage buff uh, on all of your damage after Land of the Dead ends. Now, when Land of the Dead ends, you gain a damage buff to Corpse Lance and Corpse Explosion uh, after Land of the Dead ends. So, basically, this is now going to be used exclusively for the Pestilence Master Shroud set builds, uh, corpse Lance builds, uh, Bone Spear builds, it's all the same build. So, uh, that is probably a good thing. It encourages people to play the Bone Spear set and 
like I said, it further it further nerfs the uh, invulnerability build. Um, Requi Requiem Cray Plate. I'm probably saying that word wrong, but whatever. Devour restores an additional 75 to 100 percent essence and life. In addition to when Devourer restores essence or life above your maximum, the excess is granted over three seconds. So it's going to it's going to restore a lot more health and essence. That's the change that was added to it. So it's cool. Fate's vow: After consuming 15 to 20 corpses, you unleash a free Death Nova. That has been removed, and now your Army of the Dead gains the effect of Unconventional Warfare, which was previously part of the uh, weapon offhand uh, set bonus. So obviously that's been changed also. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, personally, I don't like this because... Uh, the Corpse Consumption Unleashing a Free Death Nova, that's kind of cool in my opinion. Um, just gain, just taking the effect off of the set and adding it to this other weapon, that seems... For lack of a better word, it seems lazy. It seems like they should have uh, either added a new item to put this on, or just gotten rid of this effect altogether and uh, and maybe nerfed this if they thought it was too powerful. But, you know, I don't know what actually goes into making these items, making these skills, or changing the tuning on these things. So I don't really know what all it takes. So, I mean, me saying that it sounds lazy... Uh, that's probably me just coming from a place of ignorance. And when I say ignorance, I literally mean the definition of ignorance, which means lack of knowledge. I don't know what it does. I, or rather, I don't know what it takes for them to make these changes. So, uh, more bound gauntlets. It was your golem now has a 10 to 15% chance to shed a corpse when he gets hit. Now he's going to drop a corpse every second. So that's good. That's very good for corpse consumption builds. Um, golem skin breaches. Your golem's damage increased, which stays the same. Uh, you now have additional damage reduction. They buffed the damage reduction you have to 30%. And they changed it from, what, uh, from when you were within 18 yards of your golem, you get that damage reduction. They changed it so that now, when your golem is alive, you get that damage reduction. So I believe the only time you would not have that damage buff is when you uh, activate the golem's court, the golem's skill that sends it off to do whatever it does. Uh, Briner's Journey Bone Spikes has a 20 to 30 percent chance to cast a Bone Nova at the target location. It's cool. They buffed that. Um, Dainty's Blinding, Binding. This is a good one. It was originally Decrepify gains an additional 20 to 30% damage reduction for attacks against you. That's pretty situational. Um, I was using this on my, uh, Tregul's Scythe set. I... I don't remember what the actual item is. I talked about it earlier. It's the one that, it's the scythe that uh, drops a random curse on your enemies when you hit them. I was using it there, and it's a little bit of damage reduction. They've changed it to now you gain an additional 40 to 50 percent damage reduction when there is an enemy affected by your decrepify. Awesome. That build just got a very big damage reduction buff. Awesome added a word to the Skeletal Mage Ring that I can't pronounce. Uh, okay, they completely changed Crisbin's sentence. 
So as you can see, it was uh, Bone Spikes, Bone Spear, and Bone Spirit deal additional damage against enemies that are crowd controlled. They have changed that. You now deal 75 to 100 percent increased damage to enemies that are slowed, or you're going to triple that bonus against enemies affected by any other type of crowd control. Awesome. Uh, more damage buff. That's going to be a pretty good damage buff against CC'd enemies. That's going to help with uh, with great with pushing, especially in groups. I think that's going to help make a rift killer uh, necromancer happen that might even replace the Firebat Witch Doctor. We shall see. Corpse Whisper... <laughs> Corpse Whisper Pauldrons. Corpse Lance damage is increased by 25-30% to 30 for 3 seconds after you consume a corpse. Max of 20 stacks. So they have buffed the damage, buffed the number of stacks. Awesome. It's an item for Corpse Lance. I approve. Um, okay, so the only thing left is these changes to the sets. So I'm actually going to end this video right here, and I'm going to go ahead and post a second video talking about the changes to the sets. I am going to record that immediately after this. I'm going to post both of, both of these videos on the same day. I'll post one in the morning, one in the afternoon, so that, uh, you know, so there's a little bit of time to process the changes to the uh, skills and legendary items and passives, of course. Oh, my eye. Sorry about that. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this video. Uh, I encourage you to watch the next video, which is going to be going over the changes to the class sets for the Necromancer. I also encourage you to go and watch uh, the video previous to this, which is my uh, announcement that I will be a part of the Level With A Cause movement, uh, Level With A Cause campaign. I should probably find out what it's actually called. Hashtag Level With A Cause. So ladies and gentlemen, until next time, this is Primetime CP23, and I'm out.